I'm from an area where there's a lot of conflict, um, there's a lot of rivalry, and I think as a youngster, I was put through some situations where, you know, I had to muster up the internal strength to, you know, not be suppressed, uh, and I've just kept that mentality and I've brought it in the gym, and I won't let the weight suppress me. It's an internal thing. Um, it's a lot easier for guys who have had experiences that have taught you that that kind of principle outside the gym. I don't think it's something you can manifest in the gym. It's in you or it's not. That's where you've got to go. Do that day in, day out, that's going to be fucking you and you'll get it. So, obviously, we're in King's Gym today, guys. One thing you'll probably notice just from this video alone is, is the vibe. You know, the atmosphere here is just, it's outstanding. Um, I've never been to a gym like it. I was fortunate enough to be one of the founding members. So I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm ecstatic with how it's came out. And one thing, you know, you can go around, you can ask anyone in the gym, why is this gym good? And they, they won't even be able to explain it. They'll just say, it's just good. There's just something about it. Because it's more than just what it is on the surface. There's an aura, there's an energy, there's a vibe. There's something much deeper than just what you see. Um, and to put it into words, would undermine how important this gym is and how good it is. So, you know, guys, you're gonna have to come down here and train here to feel it. The guys have been fortunate enough to be in here today and I guarantee they can agree with me that there's something about this place that feeds you and allows you to train hard and just puts you in a good mood. Please, you know, if you get over to the UK, guys, just get yourself down here and jump in on the session. I promise you, it's, it's just something different. Five, and again, easy, come on, let's go. Six, keep going, let's go. Yeah, so to be fair, in all honesty, I spent a lot of my younger years as a bodybuilder with high volume. Uh, I reached a certain stage of muscularity. Couldn't get past that point. I literally hit a, hit a plateau. I spent a couple of years at that plateau. And it wasn't until I started to pull back the volume and up my rest, that I started to see uh, more, I suppose, results coming again. So, yeah, to be fair, I was a volume trainer. I used to praise it, I used to love it. I used to do body parts every day, so it was like chest on Monday, back on Tuesday. Uh, but like I said, I, I reached a point where I couldn't get any better. So I decided to strip back, simplify, train harder, but less sets, more intensity within the sets, and uh, the results started coming again. So it pays to change the training sometimes, guys. It really does. My, my main influence was, it's kind of two people to be fair. One is a former coach of mine, trained by JP, Jordan Peters, a uh, very low volume trainer, very big guy. Um, he's kind of, at the, he's the arrowhead of British bodybuilding in terms of progressive overload. He does a lot of programs for people. But where we also look to is guys like Dorian Yates. Um, you know, this isn't no new thing, this is an old thing, it's been going on for a long time. Uh, it's just trying to remind ourselves of what works. And uh, you know, for a few years, we got caught up in a fad of high volume. And, and now I've taken it right back to today's Dorian Yates. Just keep it simple, train bloody hard, and make sure that the sets you do do count. I'm going to start kind of uh, what you see from the get-go form-wise would be the form I finish with. I, there are the odd days where I, I literally will aim for absolute overload and I might have a little knock and a little bounce, but typically I'm really rigid with it now. But we'll see what happens. You know, boys are here, so we might end up fucking going a bit more crazy. Let's see what happens. Yeah, let's go! Oh, 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 oh,
So you're not taking as much of the load. Uh, Arsenal strength is pretty much the same as well. You can put 10 plates aside on an Arsenal strength. But on this, I can keep you not get to like five, six plates and it becomes it becomes a real challenge. So, which is good because if you get strong on this, you go to other gyms and you'll find it easy. So get, get strong on the hard stuff. And then uh, you'll be strong everywhere to be fair. We'll do, uh, let's say, 10 to 15 on the first round. Failure second, failure third. Failure is likely to be about eight on the second, six maybe. And on the third, it's got to be hard for three to four. Really, really fucking have it. A couple of forced reps as well will assist. So on that last round especially. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah, let's fucking have it. Yes. Yes. Keep going. Them legs are going to fucking start aching in a minute, don't worry. Yeah, and again, and again. Come on. And again. And again. Come on. Let's go now. Tell me why. All right, guys, so obviously today I'm not training alone. I'm here with my two training partners, Simon and Louis. Uh, Simon is a high level British bodybuilder. He's placed top three at the British final season. So he's one of the top guys in the national shows. And Louis is actually national champion as a classic bodybuilder as well. So two very, very good bodybuilders on their way up. Um, I'll let them tell you a little bit more about themselves. Simon. Yeah, so. Cool. I'm Simon. Um, before, I used to do a lot of volume training myself as well, and then um, me and James decided to start training together. Uh, ever since then, um, literally, I've gone leaps and bounds in regards to um, building my physique from doing low volume training. So, yeah, it's really, I think we work really well as a team, and yeah, really great. Yeah, this is excellent, really. Yeah. Simplified everything and just made sure we're training harder, really. Think, Same with Louis, isn't it? Yeah. My name's Louis William, and I'm a classic bodybuilder, British champion. And um, yeah, I've always been alongside James. I've always looked up to him, and we've got a bit more closer over the last couple of years because we've both been a bit more successful. And I'm the same as Simon and James before. I've always done a lot of high volume, very low rest. I'm quite an active person, but being with James now is just making me realise that I need to lower the rest and do, do more heavy Spend, spend more yeah. time at home recovering, less time in the gym, but with more accuracy. Accuracy is everything. As long as you, you come in and you can pinpoint and get the most out of those, those sets you do do, you know, the rest of your day should be uh, a contribution towards recovery. So that's your nutrition, that's your rest. And it's also leisure time as well. You know, you've got to be mentally relaxed as well. You've got to do things that, you know, regular people do, socialise, chill out. Um, because if you're happy, your body's going to recover and your body's going to progress. Yeah. That's it. We're working now. This is the one that can you up. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. Get that up. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And again, one more, bro. One more, one more, one more. One more. Yeah, one more. Get it now. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. Come on. It's like that. Oh god, bodybuilding culture in the UK is superb. It's just a shame that you don't get to see as much of it as what is actually going on. We all stand by one another. 
It's very connected. Um, all the pros are very much friends. Uh, even the amateurs are friends as well. And we all want the amateurs who are good to get their just deserves and become pros. So we're supporting the guys that are coming up because we've been there ourselves. You know, I've been the amateur. I've been fighting for the title. I've been trying to win. And it took me 10 years to get there. So I understand where these guys are coming from. So it, it gives me nothing but joy to kind of train with them and help them, you know, achieve their dreams and their goals. So it's a really good place. I think it's unfortunate we don't get to show it much. Opportunities like today allow us to show you guys what's going on in the UK. And I would say this, there's going to be some really good United Kingdom bodybuilders at the Olympia in the next few years because finally now we have some really good platforms here that allow us to go out there and compete. So keep an eye out for us guys over here. I promise you. So, you know, don't underestimate the importance of a training partner. It will take time to find the best one, but it's worth the time. I can add to that as well. Um, I've never had a training partner until now. Obviously, I've trained with people, but they always seem to fall off. So, once you've found that right person, you need to stick with that person. And I drive 170 miles every day yes. to train with James, every single day. That's how much of a good training partner is. So. And, and it doesn't just simply have to be someone who's the same size because look at me and James like there's no way I can lift the same weight as him but it doesn't matter because we still motivate each other so don't just if you're a massive guy don't just have to train with someone who's lifting the same weight as you as long as the connection's there you feed up each other like I lift like half the weight James does but I can still push him beyond what he's capable of and he does the same for me. So. We've all got that same level of heart I don't care if he's lifting 100 kilo I'm lifting 300 kilo I care that he's going until he's almost dead. And that's all that matters. If you've got that, string together a few years of good training, you're gonna fly, you're gonna fly. <laughs>